tell me, what is your memory of Hong Kong when you were last there? I think about 10 years ago. Yes, that's right. It's like New York for Asia. It ha well, and I'm a native New Yorker. Yeah. And you married a Chinese. I married a Chinese who was also a native New Yorker. And a Cantonese, much more. Right. Which constitute American born. American born, but nonetheless um, ethnically Cantonese. Right. Uh, who form 90% of our population in, uh, right. in, in Hong Kong. But he's, he didn't speak any Chinese. No, he avoided learning Chinese. But why was that? He was brilliant. Yes. He went to the Bronx High School of Science. He became a doctor. But he grew up during World War II in Washington Heights in a rather poor family because his father was a Hong Kong merchant, much, much older than his American-born mother. And during World War II, boys would mistake him for Japanese. And that actually happened in your book. That's the correct. The great book, Fear of Flying, in the last pages when you went to seek him out, who was your fictional husband, Bennett, I Bennett, think. Bennett, right. And his name was Bennett Wing. Right. And um, the hotel didn't recognize the name and uh, thought it was something else. And they all thought that he was Japanese. Uh, and of course, you made the famous statement, which I thought I would never in my lifetime <laughs> ever read, that all Chinese look alike. To which, the Brits. To the Brits, well, to, to whoever. <laughs> which is a line sometimes I use for the Westerners. When I don't recognize them, I say, all you Westerners look alike to me. Talking about Fear of Flying, which of yes. course was the seminal My book. My famous, most famous, famous book. famous book, which has been translated into 38 languages, so 20 million copies and so forth. 27. 27, I'm sorry. Who's counting? <laughs> Who's counting? <laughs> but you wrote this about 40 years ago, and it's the 40th anniversary of the publication of that book. At that time, of course, it was almost uh, revolutionary, uh, especially from the point of view of you being a female author, That's writing correct. about all these extraordinary things, in particular sex, for example, or not so much sex itself, but sexual sentiments. Fantasy. Yes, but, 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 but relating it from the point of view of woman rather That's than correct. man. Were you very proud of that um, opus, which um, was your first novel, wasn't it? Right, my third book. I had published two books of poetry. But I have to tell you, I was terrified writing it. I was convinced it would never be published. I was convinced I would be flayed alive, disemboweled, whatever. I wasn't sure that it was anything but a rant. And who helped me in my imaginative life? Well, Philip Roth with Portnoy helped me in my imagination. Henry, who became my Miller. great friend, Miller, yeah. Um, yeah. with a Tropic of Cancer. Yeah. In the late 60s, publishing changed because a few very important court cases liberated literature. And at that point, we were able to read Lady Chatterley's Lover in paperback. We were able to read, when before it was banned, we were able to read Tropic of Cancer, um, the memoirs of Fanny Hill, and suddenly male writers took this new freedom. In the days of Norman Mailer, he couldn't write F-U-C-K. He had to write F-U-G yes. or F star star yes. K. But tell me, at the time of the publication of um, Fear of Flying, lots of people wanted to read it, and lots of people talked about it, obviously. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, uh, I, mean I remember... And it was very controversial. Some people thought it was brilliant, progressive people, yeah. and some people thought it was trash. You also managed very brilliantly, if I may say so, to pepper it with uh, literary references. I mean, it wasn't. But that's in my head. Uh, yes, I can't and, help that. Yes, and, <laughs> and, and, and your relation, uh, your your quotations of all, all related to the fringes of, of your of your fantasies. And, Absolutely and, and, right. And, and that gave you uh, provenance, which I suspect made the literati slightly envious or jealous, and that's why they. The literati. Absolutely hated me. Yes. Alfred Kazin, people like that, the critics. And yet, 
artists like Updike and Miller got it. And Updike said um, that he thought that this was a, an olive branch in the war between the sexes yes. because my heroine loved sex and had orgasms, whereas in most of the feminist books, the women were always saying, I don't want it, don't touch me. It's how about rape. the women, your women audience? Did they think that the book effectively gave more liberation to feminism, or did they think it a travesty to the I women? had both reactions. From the more progressive women, they said, you've written the story of my life. At last, I know I'm not a freak. For the more puritanical women, it was, oh no, I don't want to go there. So I got exactly both reactions, yes. which is good for a book, because I believe that books should aerate the mind. And if people argue about a book, it has to be good. So you possibly are responsible for encouraging promiscuity. So they said, so, yes. you can't, I can't prove it one way or the other. Yes. But I will say that I did another thing that most people aren't aware of. Which is? Chinese American guy, college guys yes. come up to me at college readings in the US and Britain. And they say to me, everyone used to think we were nerds. Yes. And now we are sex objects because of fear of flying. Did fear of flying make you very rich? No. <laughs> Why? Because uh, it was published in 73. And initially when it came out, it was very controversial. Um, it was sold to the movies for a pittance. It was, so I had a very famous agent, no longer famous, but whatever. And the publishers initially didn't want it. The French publishers said, um, French women don't need psychoanalysts, they have French men. The German uh, publishers said, and then they sold half a million copies when they finally took it. So how many books have you written, uh, how many poetry books and how many non-poetry books? I've written seven books of poetry, eight novels. My next novel will come out in 2014. It is called Fear of Dying. Oh, wow. And my next book of poetry will probably come out in 2015. I don't yet know the title. It may be called Visible Invisible. I've also written a novel about Sappho called Sappho's Leap, which yes. is set in ancient Greece. Yes. I've written a novel set in 18th century England called Fanny Being the True right. History yes. of the Adventures of Fanny Hackabout Jones. My field at Columbia was 18th century English literature. Ah. I am a satirist. I like to write books that are both sad and funny. Right. I think the, the books I love the most are ones that are both tragic and comic. Dickens, yes. Oscar Wilde, yes. um, George Bernard Shaw. Yes. Why did I study 18th century? Because I loved, loved, loved satire. Uh, Erica, we are looking forward greatly to Me your too. coming. Me too. I and, loved uh, Hong Kong when I was there a few years ago. I loved China. I have to say, two years ago I was in the People's Republic of China and I fell in love with the richness of the culture, everything from ceramics to silk to poetry to architecture. I, I, you can't really, in three weeks, even get a taste of China, uh, but I'm dying to go back. Mm -hmm.